Good morning, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all back after Easter. I hope you had a good holiday. Um, I, I certainly did. And one of the things that, well, I, I, I do read a lot of newspapers anyway, although having said that, yeah, I'm a little bit old-fashioned reading my newspapers, but I do, I do tend to read them online. And I read, I get a certain newspaper myself, um, but I also do look at some other newspapers, usually through things like Twitter. And clearly one of the, the, the aspects that we've all been thinking about during the pandemic is, is this idea of lost learning. Um, and, and what I noticed in the press, not just the press, but from lots of other people, are, are, are some, of, some, of, some of the statements sometimes seem a bit shocking, um, maybe a bit sensational, but I suppose if a newspaper, you are trying to sell newspapers, aren't you? You want it to be fairly sensational because no one's going to read a boring newspaper. However, you know, when you, you look at some of the things and, and, and as a student or as a parent, you might be, oh my, oh my word, that, that looks terrible, you know. So, for example, one in six children never catch up after COVID school closures. Now, that's from Children's Commissioner, so, you know, that, that, that's not a sensation, this newspaper article, even though I did get it from a newspaper. Um, but as you'd expect from certain newspapers, so this one from the Daily Mail, children who lost six months of education could lose £40,000 in future income. Um, an army of tutors will be needed to ease the damage to lost learning from the Telegraph. But again, more respectable, if you if you if you if you like, more respectable um, um, sources such as the Institute for Fiscal Studies. Covid could cost children three hundred and fifty billion pounds in lost earnings. So you know, some fairly scary figures there. If you know, if you're your age and you're looking at the future. Now. You know, um, when when you look at when you look at um, findings like that, the thing to think about is if I, if I wanted to go and test them, really, that I'd have to go and do a, you know, a full scale research study on it. Um, and many of you will go on to university and do dissertations at degree level, master's level, and probably some of you at doctor level. Um, and and these are the things where you can really take stock of, of evidence and and make make your own decisions based on it. Now, what I'm saying today isn't based on those things, it's based on my own feelings and my own experience. But, but I, you know, I think at a school like Coldy, um, many of our students won't be as affected as badly as some, perhaps some other students. Certainly some students will be affected who are here at Coldy. And it is quite difficult to say who and why, although, you know, perhaps today you'll see some of the reasons why. I return to a um, return to a subject to talk about regularly in assemblies. Is it's about how you learn best and how you get involved and how you make more progress. And the, these these are just reminders, if you like, of it. You know, sorry to read all these things out, but you know things like when you're sat in a lesson, you know, how much are you observe in the teacher and what's on the board. Are you listening all the time? Are you thinking about what the teacher's saying and trying to explore other aspects of what they say? Are you putting quite, put your hand up and asking questions when you don't understand things, or you, know, you sometimes fair enough to ask the people that around you if you're not sure about something? But are you doing that? Are you getting involved in asking questions? So this whole idea about being really interested in what's going on, your motivation for learning, being engaged in that lesson, are you are you motivated? Are you, are you engaged? You know, because ultimately, are you taking responsibility for your own learning? You know, getting involved in making decisions about your own learning and organising yourself and activities. So the, these are the aspects of that you know I talk about all the time. These are the aspects of school that your teachers are trying to help you develop from when you come here in year seven all the way through to when you leave in year thirteen. And obviously, I'm talking to the whole school here. Some of you will be further on than others with with, with many of these aspects. But one of the one of the things about um, having to learn at home is is you know, particularly for our older students, those people who've engaged in that type of learning will, will have real advantages over those people, maybe from other schools or other parts of the country who haven't. Because when you go on to further studies at university, it is all about your own learning and you taking control of your learning. And I thought, I thought today we'll, we'll do a little, um, just a little exercise. And, and I'll talk you through it. So again, it's not too scientific, but it might give you a little idea, a little self-review of where you're at. 
So this is about you really, and I've given you four things to choose from. Always, which will score five marks, often four marks, occasionally two marks, and never one mark. Um, and I'll quickly go through the, 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 uh, the, the different categories. So, so when you're in lessons, are you always observing? Often? Occasionally? Or some, you know, hopefully, are you never looking at what's going on? Similarly with, are you listening? You know, always, often, occasionally, never. So, you know, are you exploring the, what's going on in your head? Are you thinking about what the teacher's saying and what's on the board? If you're watching a video, are you, are you playing it through in your head? How often do you review your work? You know, when you get home, how often do you get your books out from the days and, and have a quick read through? You know, you always do it, occasionally, never. Again, give yourself a mark. How often do you ask, ask questions? You know, interested, how interested are you? And, and again, this, this might vary across subjects. So maybe pick a subject that perhaps you think you're not too keen on. How interested in that lesson are you? How motivated are you in these lessons? How engaged are you? Again, taking responsibility, making a decision, you know, do you make a decision about your own learning? And certainly, how often do you plan your own work? And how often do you organise your own work? So, you know, you can ask your form tutor now to pause it if you want for a couple of minutes, just, and you don't really need to write them down, you can if you want, but just keep a quick score in your head, you know, how many would you give yourself for each of those 12 categories? And then add them up. And when you've added them up, and again, this isn't scientific, but it's just a little guide. So, so just to give you some, you know, some idea of where you're at. The average score, which would be about 36, would make you, you would have thought, an average learner. Well, the average grade for GCC is about a grade five. So is that where you think you are? Well, that's average across the country. It's not average in, in, in this school. The average in this school is higher than is higher than the grade five. So if you're already scoring averages, is that where you see you are as an average student across the whole the whole country? Hopefully not. Um, but just you know, really to maybe surprise you a little bit. But if you score all twos, so the occasionally, that's going to give you around about twenty four. But anything less than twenty four, you're you're talking grade three, grade four GCSE. Now is that really where you want to be? I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it isn't. Um, sorry for you A-level students, but you know, you'll get an idea from, you know, from yourselves what average grades are. Grade sevens, you know, grade seven, which is, which is an old grade A, you're looking at getting all four, so four in all 12 of those. And then those people who look at grades eights and nines, you're looking at mostly fives to score, to score more than 55. So, you know, that, that might just bring it home to you a little bit where you are with your studies and how you engage in lessons. Um, and I, it's always worth, and I'm going to do this re fairly regularly, it's always worth reminding you, and your teachers will certainly remind you of these, the different levels of learning. Uh, there's different there's different sort of theories around this one, but it, they, all, they all fit into a similar pattern. And the one I've got on the screen for you here is, that, is those six areas. And I'll just quickly go through them. So the first level of learning, just remembering things. So, so this is, this is where someone gives you some facts and you learn them, you know, relatively straightforward stuff, almost quiz level stuff, you know, what's, what's the capital of Albania, things like that. Um, and w when you're doing questions in exams or tests, CCTs, the type of, the type of words you see in the question are label, you know, label, label these parts of the eye, list, choose, recall. So that's your, that's your basic level of learning. Second level, understanding. So you start to explain your ideas or concepts, um, and again, the, the sort of words you see, and you, you'll remember these from different tests, you know, a whole range of subjects. Define, describe, discuss, explain. Discuss is always a good one, isn't it? So, so that, that, there's your, your second level. Apply is next. This is where you're starting to apply something you're familiar with to different situations, and, and again, obviously the word apply will crop up in questions, but also things like construct, Generalise, sorry about the Americanism there, to change some of the other ones to S's, but it's a Z on there. Uh, illustrate, solve, you know, as a mathematician, solve an equation might be one of these. So your teacher does, goes through some equations and then gets you to solve different ones that are similar to these things. So, you know, start to move up the scale of, of, of levels of learning. So you get to the high levels now, analyse. And you can see I've used an S instead of a Z this time. So this is where you're breaking information into different parts. You're exploring your understanding and relationships between things. 
And again, look at the words you see in the questions. And I'm sure, particularly the older students, you're going to be quite familiar with these words. Obviously, analyse itself. Deduce, compare, that's a popular one, certainly. Deconstruct, differentiate. Next level up, evaluate. So this is very right, in-depth reflection, criticism. Again, criticism is maybe a word you, you discuss in some sort of, so we, did, we discuss it in maths at sixth form, the word criticism. Um, so, you know, how you justify a decision or a course of action. And again, you know, there's lots of different words you can see on the screen there. The obvious ones, again, you know, uh, assess, conclude, conclude, criticize. Again, sorry about the Z. Debate, differentiate, discriminate, infer, and then finally create. So, you know, work is creative, isn't it? You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't come to school just to do some random facts. I mean, sometimes things might feel a little bit random. You know, certainly as a maths teacher, sometimes you think you know, you're teaching this and, and students don't always understand why they're learning it. Obviously, as you go through school, you do start seeing those things. It's sometimes easy to learn when you know, when, when you're actually solving problems um, rather than doing some fairly abstract questions, which is certainly true in maths. But what, what you're actually trying to get to, you, you, you're trying to create solutions to everyday problems. You know, at the end of it all, that's, if you get to the, you know, the top level of understanding, the top level of learning, which, you know, being in the school, you're all capable of doing, you're going to be creating solutions, everyday solutions. I'm sorry again to talk about maths, but that's my subject. But, you know, you're going to be the ones who, if, if you do maths at A-level and beyond, you're going to be the ones that are creating models that map the weather, models that map the stock market, that can make people vast sums of money or lose people vast sums of money overnight. So that's that's the level we're talking at there. So different different levels of learning and, you know, your aspirations, hopefully those higher le levels of learning. There they are again, just a quick summary of the six. Um, and then, so, so, you know, returning to your learning, thinking about, you know, your, your self-assessment a little bit earlier, about, you know, who's responsible for your work, you know, I've, I've split it into those three areas because, you know, the third one is a new one, isn't it? You know, we haven't had lockdowns before, but we have in recent times, you know, usually it's working class work at home. And again, people do vary between the two. Some work better in class, some do work better at home. It's always difficult to, to say, you know, where you're going to learn the most. But if you start taking responsibility for your learning with some of those aspects of it or some of those, those attributes I've talked about earlier, you know, it is, it is the time when you're at home and you're working on your own and applying these things that you can really start flying. When you do a degree, you sit in, you sit in lecture theatres, you can't really put your hand up and ask questions halfway through it. It's about you taking notes and thinking, I'm not sure about that, I'll just make a note of that. And when you come back to your tutorial with your tutor, you, you, you go back and say, you know that thing you talked about on Tuesday, you just go over that aspect of it. So it's about you identifying these issues and you solving them. So you solving them yourself, you're the one that's learning. The teacher, the lecturer, they can help you learn. They can't do the learning for you. It's all about what you do. And, and you know, the, the teachers in this school have done a lot of work over the past couple of years regarding that feedback to you. It's not all about giving you a mark 5 out of 10, 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. It's about developing an ongoing discussion about what you understand about your work. You shouldn't be afraid to say, I don't get this work. Can you explain it to me? Can you go through it again? And what teachers are trying to do is they're trying to get you to, to trust them, trust them to, for you to go and say, look, I don't get this. Can you, can you go through it with me? And that, that, that's what learning's about. It's not about getting 10 out of 10, it's about you understanding things and you developing your own ideas. And again, coming back to this idea about lockdown, those, those students, particularly some of our older students, and I know certainly some of our sixth form students, adapted very well to learning at home because they've got all these skills already. They've, they understand how to learn and apply them, you know, because it's, it's you, you as, as a student, who, who, who's going to benefit from these things. So a bit of a summary there, just of, of a, you know, sort of things I've been talking about. Their, their, their attributes, if you like, of, of, of what the best learners are. And they're all the same things I've discussed about already. And again, going back now to that, that list I gave you earlier. If you want to succeed, are these the type of things you should be doing in class? Even in the subjects you're not so keen on, you know, all right, 
it's not so bad at A level when you may be doing three or four subjects and you've picked them, or certainly even maybe in years nine and ten when you've got rid of a couple of subjects you don't want to do. But you, you'll find that if, if you engage in lessons that you're not so keen on and you listen, and you, you know, I, I, I certainly remember I struggled with French at school. But I just, I just, I had a good teacher, I think it was in year eight, who really turned me on to the subject. And I still struggled with it all the way through. I got C in the end at, at, at all level, but I really enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I love trying to speak French now and a lot of what I learned, what I learned then, I can, I can use now. But certainly because of that teacher, I did get more engaged in the subject and it motivated me more. And because I was motivated, I tend to work better and do better with my home. When you get a better mark and better feedback, you think, oh, that's good, I'm actually making progress here. But, it, you know, I had to consciously make that decision and, and, and to get involved in that subject. And particularly, you know, jumping on a few years, so when I was at degree level, you do all sorts of different modules on your degree. I was doing math, stats and computing. But we, we did aspects of sociology and, and psychology and certainly some bits of that I wasn't keen on at the beginning. But what I found is that by engaging them in a little bit more in the, when it was in the lecture and thinking a little bit more about what was going on in the lecture, I actually understood it. So when, when the exam or the assignment came around, I wasn't plowing through notes trying to make sense of stuff because I, I made a lot of sense of it by engaging in the lecture, by being part of what was going on, you know, when, when the lecture was telling me about stuff and, and applying giving me problems to work through. I'm thinking about it and, and I'm, I'm, make, I'm making notes and I'm going back and I'm asking them later. So, so I found certainly in my second year, when I was doing exams, I found them much easier because it engaged more than I did in the first year. First year, I have to say, I picked and chose what, what I engaged in. And some subjects I struggled, some subjects did fantastically, fantastically in. By second year, I'd got a little bit more consistent. I found the whole exam experience a lot more positive, if you like, in the second year. So I'm going to finish there and finish with a quick summary of some of those things, that, you know, and, and the obvious one is that learning is your responsibility. Teachers can't, they can teach you, they can help you to learn, they can try and give you the skills, but it's ultimately your responsibility to do that. And again, you will learn, you will learn more, you'll understand more when you get involved in your lessons, listening, thinking, talking, observing all the time, not daydreaming or looking at the back of the book or thinking about the match or what you're doing at the weekend. Try and engage yourself. They're not long, these lessons. The more you engage in it, the more you'll find that, you know, those links in your brain are built. Building the understanding doesn't come by learning a load of facts. It comes by building understanding. So when you don't understand something, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to stay behind or come back and ask those questions. Review your work. You know, if that is the biggest thing of all. If you go away and look through the, your notes for the day, and spend five, ten minutes on each of the lessons you've done, you will learn so much more. So much more will be built in your understanding in your head. So, you know, read things through. And then if there's anything you're not sure about, go back and see the teacher again. And this whole thing about organising yourself and your work, you'll just find you will create yourself lots and lots of time and space to do the things you want to do. And I talked to didn't have that motivation through success. So thank you for listening. But again, you know, I'll finish with that point a bit. Learning is your responsibility. Have a good day. Thank you.